Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to discuss how to combine parts in Blender. So maybe you have multiple meshes or you have a um, maybe a sword and a, a knight or a, maybe you've got a sci-fi guy with a gun and you want to combine them to make them a single mesh or you want to have multiple iterations of a model where sometimes they've got a gun or sometimes they've got a blaster or a, you know, a gatling gun or a sword or whatever the case may be, or a mount with a rider and a mount without a rider. There's a lot of opportunities here, but what we need to figure out is how do we combine them? Well, there's right ways and there's wrong ways. So let's start We'll start short and sweet and explain the simple versions, and then I'll go into how it gets kind of complex, especially when you're working with models you found on the internet. So to start with, we'll use our basic Crowdloom model. And I use him as a default in the demo because I love him. We're gonna make him look very dapper today by giving him a top hat and a cane. So the wrong way to give him these accoutrements is by selecting his entire self with all of his pieces, right click and hit join. Now, if we've done this, what we have done is not combine these meshes. We have created a multi-part mesh. So multi-part models become a little bit of a problem because they are not a singular mesh. They are completely separate. And there are some technical reasons as to why you might not want to do this, but we'll start with the first reason. The instructions for Tailweaver suggest not doing it this way. So in the instructions for setting up things in Tailweaver, it says your mesh must be a singular mesh with triangular polygons. And it reiterates this again, make sure your mesh is an airtight single mesh, a single airtight mesh. So with that in mind, we, we shouldn't do it this way. It also affects things like the quality of your texture painting and a few other things. And I can talk about some workarounds and you can start getting really complicated with this, but let's just say, we'll go with the, 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 the default that, well, let's just say we're not going to do it. Or we're not going to do it because it says not to. All right. So how do we do this the right way? Well, I'm going to undo my join. I'm going to take my crowd loop. And instead of doing this weird thing where I'm joining them or just exporting it as an STL with my eyes closed, um, I'm going to grab the crowd loop and I'm going to add a modifier. So over here in the modifier properties, add modifier, and we are going to add a Boolean modifier. By default, Boolean modifier is set to difference. You're going to change it to union because you want to combine the meshes, not remove mesh space between them. So then we can use our eyedropper to select the object we want to merge in. You can also just pick it from the drop down list. Once we've done that, we can also hide what we're combining like this, and we can see that it is put them into one mesh. And we can just apply it. All right, now that was easy. So now let's talk about hats. Hats are tricky and I like them for a demo because there are interior and exterior spaces of hats that are hollow. So if I go and look inside my hat, whoop, yep, it's hollow like I would expect. Um, and that causes problems because now when we're combining the meshes, we have an interior space that may or may not cause issues also. Hats are tricky because you have a lot of parts of your model that are likely poking through, whether it's hair or horns or other things like that. Now you may not care, you might say, that's fine by me and, and lock and load and go. And that's fine, but I'm gonna talk about how you kind of fix this to where it looks right on your model. So we want these to merge together seamlessly without any holes, gaps, and we want the interior to not be hollow. So what I'm gonna do to start is say, okay, I know that these parts need to go. So I can kind of help my way along with that by leveraging the Boolean modifier in a different way. So this time I'm going to add another Boolean modifier, but I'm going to leave it as a difference and I'm going to select my hat again. And I'm going to go ahead and apply it. So now what's happened if I hide my hat is it's actually subtracted the space of the hat from the Crowdloo model so that we have these sort of freestanding uh, cut mesh widgetlings. So we want to get rid of those and we can do this by popping back over into edit mode and we can put the hat back on because it'll make it easy to see. And now we just want to select parts of the mesh that poke through. So I'm just going to shift select these guys and make sure I've got them all. And control L on my keyboard will select linked, meaning it'll select all the parts that are connected and then I can just delete them and delete the faces. 
And I want to get this one too, though it's, it's not probably not a big deal if I leave that one there. But I'll leave that last little sniggly bit there. All right. So now we don't have anything poking through, but we have another issue. The other issue is that the hat is not fully seated on the head, which means there's these little gaps that exist. And if I am inside the hat at, and Blender's trying to merge all of this, it's going to assume that I want everything that is this interior space. And I really don't want it to do that. So I can do two things. I can manipulate and sculpt my Crodlu model to, um, to sort of get these areas where the hat would meet raised up to where they meet, or I can adjust the hat. If I adjust the hat, I might try to make the entire interior space of this solid. Now, I know that for the purposes of Tailweaver, I probably never need this hat hollow. So let's look at the hat instead and make the hat not hollow. So we're going to do this in edit mode. So this is a little cheaty. I want to basically delete everything inside the hat and get rid of it. So I'm going to grab something roughly in the middle. And if I were to say control L, it's going to grab too much of the hat. I just want to grab the interiors. So I could grab everything on the exterior and select the inverse. But what I think I'm going to do is sort of trick Blender into uh, doing what I want by simplifying it for myself. So I'm going to be in face selection and circle select. Now this lets me sort of drag a selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag along this interior ring of the hat. And I'm catching a little bit more behind it. And that, that's okay. I'm not worried about grabbing the splash screen or sort of like the, the back there. In this case, overpaint's not a problem because I'm going to be getting rid of all that anyway. And I might say, let me clean this up a little bit. I just want to have that interior ring. I don't really want all of this stuff to go away. So let's just clean that a little bit. And this is this is pretty easy stuff, but it's a good practice if you are not sure about edit mode but want to kind of get better at it. Um, this is a good quick sort of fix sort of thing. Now my goal is just to have a, a single orange ring there, so I'm being a little quick and loose there. All right, now I'm going to delete those faces. Now I'm going to grab a group of the interior faces, control L to select linked, and delete them. Now what I have is a hollow mesh with a big gaping hole in it. But I want to fix the fact that there's a hole here. So I'm going to go eh, inside my hat a bit and grab that ring that I was working on. So we're going to grab that edge again. And I'm not being, I'm being very uh, not clean about it. And we'll, we'll do some, some fix to it in a minute. Um, I'm being very, this is very fast and loose. And in truth, you don't have to be that careful with something like this. Let's just uh, let's finish off grabbing that ring. Oop. All right. We don't want all this grabbed. Let's ungrab that. All right. So now I'm going to go to where I'm selecting just the vertices. And we're going to just hit M on our keyboard and merge them at the center. Ooh, that looks awful, doesn't it? So what I've done is taken all the edges and just made them merge together. Now, if I want to clean this up a bit, I might go into sculpt mode and take my smoothing brush and just sort of like pretend like this is going to make it a little better if I get enough, but it, it helps just a little bit, but it kind of depends on how much brim you want on your hat still, but you can kind of smooth it out just, just a touch. We can also remesh to clean that up. Um, but there's different ways we can clean that up. It's a very unclean solution, but it's going to go away here in a second anyway, so I'm not too concerned. All right, so now this is a single hollow mesh. It's a very funky middle. And we've got our crotalu. Now let's attach them to each other. Oh. Add modifier, Boolean, union with the hat. All right. Now I'm going to hide the hat and see how this looks on the inside. <gasps> Look, there's nothing there. 
It's beautiful. The hat is now a singular mesh with the crow de loup, with maybe a little bit of messiness around the rim, but that's very acceptable. But there's no puffing out. So I'll accept that. All right, and now we have a singular solid mesh, beautifully done, where it's all one part, it's not multiple mesh parts, and we have combined it. So, so now that you've seen how everything is when it goes right, let's talk about what happens when it goes wrong. So you may have noticed if you're very sleuthy that for every object I was combining with my Crodlu, there was a original object. So we had like the cane fixed, cane original, hat fixed, hat original. Well, this is because there are a lot of issues with models sometimes, and I encountered some. So let's talk about what that might look like and how to fix it. So we'll uh, put aside our Dapper Crodlu and pull out a non-Dapper Crodlu. Aww. And let's try to give him that original cane. So this is the original one. Now, there's a few things you may have noticed if you're super sleuthy, that when I have just my Crodlu model on the deck, he has a face count of about 200,000 uh, faces, which is high. Obviously, we need to decimate him for Tailweaver. But when we have our cane, that is almost a million faces. So the cane by itself is a half million face object. That's pretty intense. So, so that's kind of a, a first thing. We might say, oh, I should probably decimate that before I combine it because it might completely grind your computer to a halt if you find that you're taking a mesh that's a million faces and trying to combine it with your other mesh. So if you encounter that, you might want to decimate. But let's say, this, that, that, well, my computer can handle it. This will be fine. So I'm going to grab my Crodlu, add modifier, modifier, uh, boolean, union, and to the cane. Oh, and it's a disappearing act. Where did my Crodlu go? So what has happened is that there is in sort of mathematically in non say. There are mathematically non-cooperative uh, geometries that are occurring that are resulting in the Crodlu disappearing. Now, the way to not fix this is if you switch over to a fast solver method, it will allow for overlapping geometry without trying to actually fix the issues. If you do this, you're not really using the Boolean modifier, you're just joining them, which is what we were trying to avoid in the first place. And I'll tell you why. This is another reason why you don't want to do this. So we'll go back to exact, which will make our little crow disappear. And we'll close out of that. And it's the cane. So I know, because I made this mesh, that it is a single mesh with nothing else going on. The cane is not. So if we were to look inside the cane, we would see that it is not what we'd expect the interior spaces have things that are cutting into it, which means that this cane is in itself a multi-part model. And that's what's causing our issues because it's trying to join a multi-part model with no true solid geometry to a model that has solid geometries and the, the two just collide and it does not work. So what we can do to fix this is we can take this object and we could say, okay, well, let's, let's do what you did before. We're going to take this, we'll go to this, we'll go into edit mode, we'll separate the loose parts and we'll remerge them. That's a lot of work. Uh, so I don't suggest doing that route uh, or route. I suggest instead taking the cane and just remeshing it. So just go in what I did is I added a remesh modifier and I just remeshed the cane. And I did this by giving it, you know, a fairly mild remesh and oh, in the wrong direction. Uh, and this kept all of the quality, uh, didn't necessarily increase the face count, though I could add some adaptivity to sort of keep that face count a little bit lower. Um, and that gives me a, a really decent model that still matches the same. And if I look inside of it, we see that we don't have those issues anymore. So with this remeshed cane, I can take this and now I can Boolean it to my Crodlu. So that is to say that if you start joining and Booleaning things together and you notice that suddenly things don't add up, uh, for example, things start disappearing, it's probably because you're dealing with a multi-part mesh as something you're joining and you'll just need to remesh it. So there's that. 
While we're on the topic of multi-part meshes and combining meshes, I want to bring up this other example. And this example was given to me, and with permission I can talk about it because I thought it was a really fascinating example, uh, by Pope. So if some of you may be familiar with Pope, he is one of the modders who has been converting over a lot of creatures into Tailspire for a long time, working under the old system, doing a lot of figure painting and substance painter. You'll see him a lot in the Discord, and he does amazing work. This model was a particular interest to me because we were talking shop about it and some lighting things with it, but I asked if I could borrow it for this demo because it's a great example of what people will probably actually do with combining meshes. And so what this is, if I open up this collection, is this is a combining of a lot of different meshes. So the barrel is a separate mesh from the tap is a separate mesh from the backpack is a separate mesh from this is that. So there's a lot going on here. In addition, some of these meshes have modifiers already placed on them, whether they're subdivision surface or some other complex things. There's a lot of work that's been done on this model. But there's a complexity to it because some of the parts are multi-part meshes in themselves. And if you remember from earlier that if we try to take them and join them, they will fail. So if I were to take this and do this and hit join, Blender will crash. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So what do we do? Now, in my mind as a 3D printer, I'm be like, okay, we got to take each part, apply the modifiers and do a little cleanup and remesh them and then combine them slowly and be very meticulous. But Pope had a really good solution that I think is definitely worth sharing, which is where what he does is after he's combined the pieces like this, treating them all as if they're separate meshes, he then takes them to so select, select all of them, make sure they're all selected. And then he exports them as an STL. Now, this does not create a solid mesh. It can create a multi-part mesh, which we're like, but we're trying to fix that. But the advantage of this is if you have a lot of parts and some of them are multi-part and some of them aren't and some of them modifiers and some of them don't, this will save you from having to uh, spend a lot of time very laboriously going through each mesh one by one. So export to STL. Now, I'm not going to hit this right now because it took some time and I'm going to go in my Easy Bake Oven and show you what that looks like having already been exported. And there's our mesh. So we can see that this is that multi-part model being imported as an STL and we know how to fix it because to fix a multi-part model uh, that we want to just convert over that we don't necessarily separate and tool with, all we need to do is apply a remesh modifier. and adjust it to where it is, you know, you have to play with your own settings. Uh, these, his blend of defaults are a little different than mine because this isn't my file. Um, but you can see we've taken what was a very complex, uh, many, many, many part model and converted it over into a single solid mesh. So if we go inside of his hat, we see that all of these parts are unified and we are good to go. All right, so in this video, we covered how to attach parts to parts using the Boolean modifier, how to solve very complex multi-part meshes and kit bashes by exporting them as an SDL and then re-importing them and then remeshing them. Thanks, Pope. This also sets the stage for some further exploration options, which I've thrown out my two crowdlu here, because this can be stacked with some other fancy tricks to leverage for actually even doing things like what if I've painted each of these things independently? So let's just, for example, the hat and uh, cane are painted independently of my crowdlu, and I wouldn't do that unless I had a trick up my sleeve for combining these later and then still getting a single solid mesh. So, but that is a more complex topic that I'm going to take some deliberation on how I'm going to cover it. But that said, for our purposes today, that is all you need to know for combining meshes and solving multi-part mesh woes. So I hope this has been helpful and it's just another tool in your toolbox as you are learning Blender or playing around and getting minis poured over and painted into Tailspire. And I hope you all have fun and uh, enjoy being creative. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.